Ladies and gentlemen, let's go racing here at Knoxville. Only the best go three of It is showtime at Williams Grove Speedway. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, here at Eldora Speedway, it's showtime. You the best. You got for a rip. Often imitated, never duplicated, the greatest show on dirt, the world. Time to sit back, relax, and enjoy because, ladies and gentlemen, it's showtime! Set to do battle for 30 laps. The green flag is waving. Hello again. It is Winged Nation presented by Hercules Tires. Right on our strength. Talking sprint car racing, our favorite time of the week. And we are so glad that you had joined us here in the Hercules Tire Studios in Concord, North Carolina. Aaron Evernham and Steve Post here as we roll along. September is just about in the books. Mercifully, we get to October, November, December, which we're going to hurry through. We're going to end 2020 and we're going to have get a spectacular <laughs> 2021. So how about yeah. that? Yes, yes. Except for we do ready. need to bring the racing from 2020 into 2021. From the second half. From the second half, yes. yes absolutely. <laughs> so it is great to catch up with you. Uh, great to catch up. You know, one of the things, one of the themes we've had this year, Aaron, is our lack of track time. Yes. You know, you love being at the track. I love being at the track. Just the circumstances. We lost all of our road shows and we did all of this. But um, Saturday night, I did get to see my USCS buddies. Yep. Um, down at uh, down at uh, Gaffney, the track, uh, the place your mama warned you about, um, and uh, it was just fun catching up with everybody, being at the racetrack, hanging out, smelling a little bit of the methanol, yeah. getting a little getting a little dirt in my beer, you know. I mean, um, it was good, and, uh, and and again, and we shared this last week on our podcast. We had Pete Walton. What um, what they're doing here in the southeast is amazing, and this continues to grow. The southeast is the, the the southeast is is getting really interesting with some good things. Yeah, happening. it is. It's neat to see that the sprint car world grow in the southeast. And I actually had the chance to go to a racetrack this weekend. It was a road race. Yes. I went to Virginia International Raceway and watched Ray do a little bit of driving, but. Um, it's nothing compared to sprint cars, but it was still the same camaraderie and the smell of fuel and tires. Like yeah, yeah, I was like, all right, yeah. I've actually kind of had me talked into driving a Porsche. So really, yeah, yeah. we'll see. We'll you're, see when it happens, but you're working on that. All well, right. They've been, they've been trying to encourage me, but I tell everyone that you, you like, I need to be ready because you can't give an addict a little taste. Like once no, you know, exactly. yeah, you're, yeah. you're back in. So, yeah. you know, Kate's five now. She's kind of independent at the racetrack a little bit. Like I think. Mom can go and maybe yeah, do a little bit. Yeah, yeah. There's some talk. Oh, there's some talk. man. I'm excited we'll see. about that. Yeah. That is cool. But it was like that. I hadn't been at the track in so long and then smelling the tires and fuel and being in the there's pit area. I was like, like all right. Racetrack. All right. I've missed it. All yeah. right. I think I'm ready. Put me in. There's nothing like a racetrack. No, there's yeah. not. Even the, you know, we we had the camper up there, motorhome we camped and just that that like that that camaraderie. You know, people yeah, are just Doesn't and everyone gets faster as the night goes on yeah, and exactly. the more beers you have, the faster and more races you won. Yeah, and was, absolutely. Something to be said for that. Just, and that's across the board all yeah, racing. Exactly. It really is. Um, yeah, it is. It's cool. Great to be over there. Um, one of the, um, there, there, there's so much and, and, and actually, um, the, the, the little 305 tour here in the area is, is experiencing growth and potentially even more growth next year. Every oh. place they go to wants them back for two dates. And then, and then Pete rolls through with USCS, so it's all really, really good. Mm -hmm. uh, Kyle Amerson picked up the win there from Montgomery, Alabama. Kyle Amerson, Justin Barger, Lance Moss were your top three. Of course, all friends there. I mean, Lance Moss and Justin Barger. Um, I think Johnny Bridges. Dad. Yes, yeah, exactly. Yes, exactly. Johnny Bridges and, um, and I think Connor Leffler. And that's the top five were all Chris Moss racing engine Fords. Oh. No, 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 wait a minute. No, I think Lance had gone with they're all Chris Moss racing engines. Okay. Uh, I think they're they're experimenting with some Chevys as well, but they were Fords at one time. Oh wow. But so so Chris Moss, Moss racing engines, they swept the top five. Not that's bad. That's a pretty good night at the old, <laughs> yeah. the old speedway, especially when it's close to home too. Yeah. Because they're in Cherryville, North Carolina or Cherryville, North Carolina. Yeah. Yeah. Cherryville. It's yeah. almost like Louisville. But Louisville, Cherville. but Cherville, yeah. exactly. Um, but it was cool. But most importantly, fun to be at the track. And those of you getting to the track, you know what we're talking about. Yep. Um, the, I mean, locally here, um, I've got a couple more 305 races and some other things that I'll get a chance to do. But, um, uh, you know, we still miss our sprint car friends. And mm. uh, this has been the year for Aaron and I of pay-per-view appreciation. Yes. So, uh, a so, lot of dirt vision and flow and yes, all of them. Yes, for sure. Uh, let's take a look at the classic ink screen printing and embroidery hot topics. The World of Outlaws had three races with three faces in 
in Victory Lane. Uh, Plymouth Speedway, the return to Victory Lane of Donnie Schatz. Fourth win of the season. Need to see. Yes. Um, fourth win of the season. That still sounds weird. It is. Now, I mean, granted, they've had 45 races, but still, four wins, still <laughs> not. Isn't. That's not Donnie Schatz. Yeah. When we're, there were years where it was like, can he get 30? Yeah. You know, I mean, um, Wayne County Speedway, I mean, this was religion. Yep. Uh, this was, uh, this was um, Allah coming back to Mecca or whatever <laughs> it was. It was Sheldon coming back to Wayne County. Um, Sheldon coming back to Orville, I guess it is. Uh, four or six win of the season, hometown. Uh, we, uh, I thought they might burn the place down before yeah. they got done. Um, really need to see Sheldon get that win and just strong there. And then Lernerville, Sheldon looked like he was going to get another one. Had a tiger go down late in the race. And David Gravel, first win since Knoxville. Wow. The Friday night of Knoxville. Yeah. So his fifth win of the season. We're going to chat with David. Uh, not only about that, but we're going into a big weekend with the National Open, and David's obviously had some success there. So mm-hmm. we're going to chat with David Gravel. So World of Allah is doing good. Over in Pennsylvania, it continues to be a solid, solid year for Anthony Macri. He won the 38th annual Jim Nace Memorial National Open at Sealands Grove. It was a 20000 win. Uh, twenty thousand dollar win, which is good. And don't look now, but he hits the double digits on the win total. Anthony Macri, ten wins. It's impressive. Yeah, it really Especially is. Especially with the amount of races, like we just talked about. Yeah, exactly. So you get you get you get d- double digit wins in twenty twenty. Yeah. Uh, and Unless you're, doing you're Kyle well. Larson. Unless I mean, you're Kyle that, Larson, yeah, exactly. So, well, he's the reason nobody else <laughs> yeah. has double digit wins. Um, so Anthony Macri really rolling along well um, and 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 strong. Bill Baylog, the North Pole Nightmare. We're going to chat with Bill as well. Uh, swept the IRA weekend. It was Dodge County on Friday night, the Plymouth Dirt Track at the Sheboygan County Fairgrounds. Um, 12 wins on the season. And again, we talk about World of Outlaws 45 races, IRA 20 races. Yeah. Uh, but Baylog able to get 12 out of the 20. Uh, it's 60%. It's a decent percentage. Yes, right it is. A 10-time IRA champion. Um, I want to talk a little bit, too, about hot topics. Uh, Western Pennsylvania. Um, and uh, we know uh, Western Pennsylvania, there is a staple, and that's Lernerville mm-hmm. on Friday night. And we know on Saturday night, it's been really all over the map. Yeah. Um, is is Sharon in or out? Is Mercer in or out? Pittsburgh's Pennsylvania Motor Speedway and Tri City. Well, um, and and Mercer was always the regular Saturday yeah. night home, and then it totally went away last year. Um, the, the, the Michael's Mercer Speedway last year they went with one four ten show, and the place was just really good. And I chatted with um, the guy Michael's. I forget his first name. Great, great guy. Great people running that racetrack. Him and his. Him and his him and his girlfriend, they're just they're just fantastic people. It's such a passion for sprint cars, um, and and I'm not shocked. Uh, of course, the COVID whatever that affected it, but we sit here and they had four races this year, <laughs> four sprint car or four four ten races. They had a bunch of other stuff too. Uh, Adam Kekich, uh, three for four this season at Mercer, but uh, it's going to be fun to watch Western Pennsylvania to yeah. see what happens on Saturdays. And and I just my my hope is that they can all work together. Mercer, Sharon, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania Motor Speedway, Tri City, City, and because there's so many good racers over there. Yeah. And and it'd be really neat for them to find some some neat spots to race on Saturday yeah, night. Yeah, where it doesn't spread them all out right, too much. But, right. Yeah. And and I think the other thing that I think one of the other challenges there, and it's such a tough place to get a purse structure because the late models are so strong, the modifieds yeah. are so strong. You know, it's it's like. It's it's like you're like Lernerville is like a world finals every night. Yeah. You know, and that's great for the fan, but how do you how do you adjust the purses? You know, I mean that's really tough. It's like well, okay, the world finals. Everyone's like, well, the world finals should pay more than a regular purse. Well, it does. It pays a regular purse for the sprint cars, yeah. plus a regular purse for the modifieds, <laughs> plus a regular purse for the late models. You don't want to pay the world finals purse. Okay, no. you don't. You're a track driver. You don't want to pay the world finals purse. Well, the sprint car guy's saying, "Well, it's it's twelve grand to win or something like that." Well, uh, yeah, yeah, it's twelve grand to win there, twelve grand to win here, and another yeah. eight grand to win here. So, really, in winners' purses, it's thirty two thousand yeah, dollars to win. Let alone every other right, exactly. Position. So, so the world finals. That's always kind of like people say, "Well, it's just a regular purse." Well, I understand that. Lernerville has the same problem every week. Yeah, because they have a late model purse, and their late model division is stout the modified division, and the sprint car. So it's a challenge. And so I hope they do well. And what would really be cool is if those Saturday night tracks, maybe they can get a little bit better purse structure over there mm-hmm. with running sprint cars and some support divisions and, and late models and modifieds or however that works out. But I just, I'm excited about what I see in Western yeah. uh, Pennsylvania. Well, and um, like those, the Tri-City, 
and, and, and Mercer, they were, at one point, looked like they were going to go away completely. Okay, so, hey, boy, there's a good point. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you're to right. At least have them running a, a host of four shows, one last year, four this year. It's a it's good sign. You're right, because at one time, Mercer, Mercer sat idle yeah, for some Tri-City amount of time. Tri-City sat idle, too. For a long time. Too. You're right about that. That's a that's an extremely good point. Yeah. So, uh, I, I let, let's fingers crossed for Western Pennsylvania. Yeah. Love the racers over there, and, and I hope that uh, I, I think that we're headed in the right direction. I think obviously 2020, Lord knows what that meant, what that did, but uh, hopefully we see consistent Friday night racing at Lernerville and consistent Saturday night racing across Western yeah. Western uh, Pennsylvania and uh, good stuff, that's for sure. So um, I want to mention this also, and and uh, if you're on social media, um, take a big gulp of air, take a big breath, because it's not something that's really good to see, um, but Rico's posts about the fires and wherever it's at out there near yeah. his home. Uh, uh, we're just, in, and we dealt with this uh, a couple years ago, when um when Kyle Hurst yeah. when Paradise burned down you know i mean and so here we are again the fires and it looks like that uh, our sprint car community is right in the path yeah. i don't know Calistoga I don't, Speedway yeah Calistoga Speedway the whole exactly town. um so uh just our thoughts and prayers mm-hmm. with everyone in northern california that's one of our great sprint car areas um yeah i think silver dollar and Calistoga are being used as as rescue sites and earlier this year ocean speedway down south yeah. was was the races were canceled because it was a livestock holding area because of fires yeah um boy we just we just uh our our, our, our prayers and our thoughts are with everyone all of our sprint car family well everyone but all of our sprint car family out in northern california Absolutely. uh just brutal stuff brutal brutal stuff so there you have it uh as we said um david gravel and bill Baylog going to join us here on the program. There's your classic ink screen printing and embroidery hot topics. Not only racing, local businesses, school districts, sports teams, you name it, they have it. And find out why drivers like Sheldon Hardenshield, Donnie Schatz, Danny Dietrich, Lethal Chassis, Tony Stewart, Brian Brown, and Wing Nation, we use them as well. They offer full custom driver apparel and crew wear options, full service embroidery department specializing in headwear and outerwear. They have an experienced design team and a dedicated sales department. We mentioned Bill Baylog. Well, here we go with it. It is the IRA bumper-to-bumper sprints, the big old half-mile Dodge County Fairgrounds. Scotty Field, the leader, Bill Baylog, bird-dogging them. With the call, oh, one of my favorite announcers in sprint car racing, Ray Underwood on Flow Racing. And now for the Dry Dean Deaf-Defying Move of the Week, where one driver simply amazes us with their on-track moves. And now Bill Baylog is within striking distance. The Nightmare is starting to cast the dark clouds on the 64. Slide job in front of Scotty Thiel. And Baylog takes over the lead with eight to go. That death defying move was brought to you by Dry Dean Diesel All Death, the official death of the world of outlaws and wheelmen everywhere. Visit drydean.com for more information. Team Dryden. Power isn't born, it's built over time. For over 65 years, Hercules Tires has been providing the muscle to move more drivers. Whatever the vehicle, whatever the terrain, and we back it with a powerful protection plan. So wherever the road or the trail takes you, we have the selection, value, and strength to get you there. Hercules Tires, ride on our strength. Oh, hey, by the way, uh, tomorrow, tomorrow, get a new set of Hercules Tires on my street, oh. street ride. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Yeah, my street car, my street, my, 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 uh, my, my, my grocery getter. Your hot um, rod? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm a Ford Escape. Yeah, there we go. That's a hot rod there. <laughs> All right, family uh, yeah, truckster. Yeah, yeah. I'm going up Canapolis to the new uh, uh, t- uh, Hercules Tire dealer yeah. up there. I've already talked to them. They got me hooked up. We're going to go in there tomorrow, get that thing shod with some new rubber. Nice. And be good for the for the fall race chasing season. 
except for we're not chasing too many races. But uh, beyond that, uh, we'll go from there. Hey, let's go. Speaking of now, a guy that's chasing a lot of racing and uh, picked up the win at Lernerville on uh, Saturday night, joins us on the Dry Dean Hotline. Welcome back to Wing Nation, David Gravel. Hello, David. Long time no talk, guys. How are you? Well, okay. I'm glad you brought this up, okay? Um, what in the wide world of sports has been going on? Why haven't we talked to you in some time? <laughs> Uh, you know, I don't know. We couldn't find Victory Lane for a little while, but we've been very consistent in keeping us in the hunt and uh, in the points. But uh, we've been wanting to win races, and uh, we just haven't been able to do that. And luckily this week we were able to pick up two. Yeah, two very big ones. Yeah. Is there? You mentioned that you've been consistent and, and luck started to fall your way, but has there been something that has swayed? Has there been any changes or are things things just started to come together? You know, I just think that uh, it's really hard to win these races this year, I feel. If you're competing for the World of All wins, you know, you got to go through either Brad Sweet or Logan Schuhart or um, Kyle Larson this year, and they all have been very, very fast. So, uh, and Sheldon here as of late. Um, it's just not nothing's handed to you. you got to earn every win this year, and it doesn't seem like there's really any gimmies except, uh, I guess, Lernerville. I definitely got a gift there. <laughs> Well, exactly, exactly. Uh, let's go back to the first part of the weekend um, when uh, Tony Stewart and the gang, Flow Racing, and everyone put together the deal at uh, Eldora. You had to be licking your chops. Uh, had to had to kind of get away from the air on the first night, getting 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 shoved down into the inside there. But uh, man, that car was awful good on the second night when the big money was on the line. Yeah, you know we are really good uh, every time we hit the racetrack, uh, getting the track record day one, winning our heat race, and then charging. Uh, for sure for a podium, uh, potentially challenging for the win, and then the second night to come back and quick time again and go fourth to second in the heat race. I mean, we were just good every time we hit the track, and I had a little bit of lady luck and drew the pole to the A main and was able to lead every lap and, and make the right moves in lap traffic and, you know, get the job done. And when those races pay that kind of money, and especially like a year like this year, it uh, makes a big difference for our team and, and for me personally. David, you just mentioned drawing the pole, okay? Every driver wants to draw the pole, okay? I get that. But is there extra pressure in drawing <laughs> the pole because you know that this can only this can go one of two ways and you don't want it to go the other way? I mean, is there is there added pressure with drawing the pole position? Yeah, for sure. You know, I've started on the pole a couple times this year and haven't won the race. So uh, if you don't get the jump, sometimes the outside lane's better on the start and, and maybe you don't get another shot at it. But um, definitely, uh, when you start in a pole, there's zero room for air, error. And, um, I would, I could start second or fourth. I think those are good positions also. You know, I think if you start in the top four and your car is good, you know, you have a really good chance at winning the race. Um, if you're just mediocre, you know, you probably got to start on the pole and it's got to be a one lane racetrack, but, um, no, no doubt that there's added pressure starting on the pole. For sure. David, I want to go back to the track record. We don't often talk about qualifying track records, but that stood for 18 years. Craig Delansky had said it 18 years ago. That lap, it's been a long time since we've seen Eldora that heavy, with that much of moisture in the track. Talk about that lap. I love the in-car camera, the video of it. I mean, your elbows were pretty locked. There wasn't a lot of movement. But describe what it's like to run Eldora wide open qualifying like that with the track that heavy. It had to be incredible. Yeah, you know, I honestly was not expecting to be close to the track record. I think in hot laps, the fastest time was like a 13.0 or a 12.9. So um, to see on the board was a 12.5. Uh, I didn't even really honestly know what the track record was going into it, but I told the guys before that we're going for the track record uh, this weekend or this week, and I knew our engine was good enough. I knew if there was enough grip, um, you know, the speed we've had in qualifying this year, we had an opportunity. So um, for it to happen was really cool. Honestly, I just didn't think I was going that fast. We've been there before where it's misted and it's freezing cold there. and Would have thought that that would have been the time we, uh, you know, would have broke the track record. So I wasn't expecting it that day, but uh, pretty cool to beat it by a pretty big margin and be the only guy to be under the track record to my knowledge that day that i think that's the other thing it's like when you see 18 guys qualified yeah. under the track record it's like okay i was the best of those guys but to be the only one to clips it i i love that uh it just it, it just there's a little bit bigger exclamation point mm -hmm. on that that is for sure so you roll through you go on to uh you, you go on to plymouth 
Then you go on to, to Sheldon's hometown there, Wayne County, where they about burned the joint down when he won it. And then you roll into Lernerville, and you, you're you right. It fell into your lap, but you put yourself in a spot for something to fall in your lap when you're running in the second spot like that. And it had to be good to get back to World of Outlaw Victory Lane. We know you're in an owner's point battle. There's just got to be a lot of good that came out of that Saturday night win. Yeah, for sure. You know, uh, it was just a roller coaster ride of a week to kind of – be the best car at Eldora the first day and then have it end the way it did and then to come back and win and then go to Plymouth and just missed it every time we hit the racetrack and then went to Wayne County and didn't start off very good and was able to get a top 10 um, and then for Lernerville you know everything was going good we drew a seven in the dash and I uh, was luckily to to gain a spot and and gain a row and finish sixth in the dash and just kind of picked my way through there. I think with about eight to go uh, is when I got second place, but just kind of rode in fifth and picked one at a time through the race. And, um, you know, I couldn't even see Sheldon, but, you know, I was going to be happy running second uh, if anything, you know, didn't happen. So with Brad uh, struggling a little bit, um, you know, it definitely puts ourselves definitely in contention. We got a chance for sure at this deal. Absolutely. You know, that, that team championship would be huge for JJR. And I know this is uh, going to be a coulda, woulda, shoulda question, but there's got to be a part of you that is, is disappointed, frustrated. Yes, you got to go truck racing. You hopefully will do more of that in the future. But those two races could have possibly put you in, in the points championship battle as a driver. Do you, you put much thought into that or you just kind of brush that aside and it is what it is? <laughs> I, I wish I wish that could be the truth, but I'd be lying if I brush it to the side. You know, it's been an extremely frustrating year for me. Um, I had such great aspirations to to go out and race six truck races, and now it only might be one with uh, their, their schedule change uh, here in a few weeks. So it's uh, been frustrating. You know, I, I know I could uh, <laughs> be in the title hunt. You know, uh, Parker's been in the car for two nights, and I believe it was like a ninth and a thirteenth place finish or something like that. So. You know, I feel that, you know, maybe I could do better in those races and I could be in better position um, as the team is right now. So, um, you know, losing the truck races, losing the chance at going for a driver's championship uh, yeah. beyond frustrating. But for me, I just have to reflect and be, man, I'm an extremely lucky guy being able to, mm -hmm. being able to race for a living, making my truck debut, finishing 10th. You know, lots of positive things have happened, but um, I feel like I'm destined for more and, and, and better things, but uh, this year has just kind of pulled that away from me. Yeah, but you got married this year, so that turned out pretty good too. You won yeah. that. You won that. That was the big win. You know, yeah, and then we quarantined together for four months. <laughs> well, well, I didn't talk even about think. a honeymoon. Whoa, I didn't even yeah. think about that. And if you yeah. survive that, then you're good for the rest of life, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, nobody's seen Jill in a while, so you know. <laughs> well, <laughs> oh no, oh dear, breaking news here on Wing Nation. No, that is cool. Uh, David, we're talking uh, to you. We're talking about the owners' point battle. Um, this this next two weekends are so pivotal. Because you're going into Pennsylvania. You've got Williams Grove this weekend, the National Open. You've won that race. Uh, you're just so good there. You won it a couple times. And then Port Royal. You th These are so pivotal races in a World of Outlaw Championship, whether it be owner or driver championship, because these things can turn the world upside down. Yeah, for sure. You know, I'm expecting a huge car count the next two weekends, especially with uh, the big money on the line Saturday at Williams Grove. So. I mean, all it takes is a, a couple bad qualifying laps and uh, you're behind the eight ball big time. So there's going to be a lot of emphasis on these next two weekends. When we go to Lakeside and Lake Ozark, you know, there's going to be far less cars. Um, Kokomo will probably have a decent car count. And then Charlotte, you know, obviously has a pretty good car count every year. So um, it's going to be interesting. Um, you know, anything's possible. Uh, it seems like everybody's around the top five and if they're not in the top five they're running you know maybe ninth or something like that so um it definitely fluctuates a little bit but not big big swings and you just have to limit your mistakes and just make the most out of every night absolutely and luckily you've had some good success in pennsylvania david i want to go a little off track i saw a cool advertisement for the nbc voice coming up and i saw your sister-in-law may or may not have auditioned uh, yeah pretty cool stuff am i correct Yep, yep. She's on the show. I cannot tell you 
uh, what team she's on, but she's a legit contender on the team I or on, on the show. So uh, when it's on TV, you'll see her. That is so cool. I mean, that, oh my God, we really? got to get the whole sprint car community voting and helping her out. I told her we are not losing a fan vote. We're going to put everybody <laughs> together on social media and we're going to make a big push for her. So that's, uh, that's my goal to help her out. And she's been looking for an opportunity for a long time and I'm happy she's able to get one. That's phenomenal. Yes. That is awesome. All right. Well, we're right up against it, but I do have one other question for you. You talk <laughs> about social media. Uh, one of our buddies, Kevin Striegel. Jeff Striegel is our lead broadcaster here. And you have been working with Kevin, his boy, and you guys have done some mm. great video work, some great production. Um, just describe a little bit here the importance of having that presence out there. And you've had your, your YouTube show. You've had your, your video stuff before. But how, why, why, why do you put so much energy into that? I think it's just as important as anything nowadays. You know, uh, you look at that kid, Ryan Vargas, uh, nailing a TikTok sponsorship yeah. for yeah. him. You know, just uh, what Rico does. You know, he doesn't do the YouTube stuff, but he has such a big following. And I can only imagine how his online store does and how much following he has on Facebook and all his videos he does on Facebook and Instagram and stuff. So. To me, if I want to be successful as a race car driver, I have to be successful on the track and off the track. And um, I just felt like I needed to put more time and effort into it. And I couldn't handle it all. I was already doing the YouTube videos myself and knew it could be better. And, you know, uh, I talked to Kevin through kind of GMS and the ARCA stuff that I did and uh, asked if he was willing to help out. And, and he has. So. Um, it's been good so far, but man, it is tough to stay on top of it. I mean, he's busy, I'm busy. It's just uh, sometimes a struggle to be really, really good at it and stay persistent with it. But my goal is to build my social media up on all platforms and uh, just keep trying to build my name, my brand, and uh, you know, hopefully more and more people notice me. And you know, hopefully, I could be one of those uh, big names one day, and uh, that carries a lot of weight. No doubt. You are on the track mm -hmm. for that. That is for sure. David, we appreciate the time. Thanks for joining us. Best of luck at uh, Williams Grove, chasing another National Open, and on throughout the balance of the season. Let's uh, let's not make it so long before we talk to you again. Go out <laughs> and win one of these things. For sure, man. I was frustrated, no doubt. But are you guys coming to any of the races uh, in the next two weeks? No, Ashley will be up at uh, Williams Grove. She'll be up there doing okay. stuff for STBS, so you'll get to see her. But unfortunately, with the... Uh, Crazy NASCAR yeah. schedule and crazy 2020. I'm not going to be able to catch it. Even Lakeside. Okay, now figure this out. Okay, Lakeside, World of Outlaws are there. We're at Kansas Speedway. And while you guys are racing at Kansas Speedway, at 9 o'clock on Friday night, we've got an ARCA race we're covering at Kansas Speedway. So I'm not even going to catch that one. I'm so bummed. But Yeah, uh, I really can't disclose everything. But uh, oh. I had some monkey wrenches. I'm supposed to race there, and they changed the race to Saturday. Uh, there's all sorts of. Oh, that's Things right. that have been messed up this year. So. Oh, that's right, because um, they changed the truck race till Saturday, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's oh, but... the Jason Johnson Classic race, so lucky me. I have a decision to oh, make. Oh, my God, oh, dude. Man. Oh, Yeah, no. I can't win. I can't win. Oh, my gosh. I just didn't even think about that, and I remember now. That's right. Yeah. Oh, boy. Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, yeah. you'll make the it's right warming. decision. You'll make the right decision, as painful as it is. I know you will, and... Um, You'll, you'll do well wherever you end up that weekend and that night. But uh, we appreciate the time. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, I appreciate you guys. Thank you. You got David Gravel. Oh, I didn't even yeah. think about that with him because, yeah, the truck race was supposed to be Friday early evening. Yep. And then it was going to be the ARCA race. And I'm like, well, okay, we're gonna, I'm going to miss the World of Outlaws, but it's a truck race and an ARCA race. Then they move the truck race to Saturday afternoon. They just did that this week. <sighs> and, and I didn't even think about Gravel's caught in that. And it's a Jason the Johnson race, race on for Saturday. Them, yeah. Oh, 2020. Just stop, please. Oh my gosh. Stop. Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna change I'm gonna change gears here, Aaron. We've got a script. <laughs> I'm gonna go off script because it ties in David Gravel winning that one, uh, winning those races. Yes. You know what wings he has on those cars? What wings? HRP, HRP wings. Okay. Original recessed rivet wing manufacturer. They use wind tunnel track performance, including Barry Jackson and David Gravel. 
to outpace the industry in design, innovation, and functionality. Not only sprint cars, lightning sprints, micros, junior sprints, shipped across the world and can be economically ground shipped right to your door. Yep, and their website is easy to shop. They have the entire line of Hefner Racing products, hrpracing.com, from your desktop or right on your phone. In your first-time online orders, you can use promo code MRN for 10% off your first order. How about that? Those HRP wings were rolling yeah. up at Eldora. I mean, you get a wing that'll go around Eldora I was going to say, like Eldora puts about as much... Well, and I was thinking that another one who uses them is uh, Brett Marks. And you look yeah. at, so Eldora uh, there, uh, you look at Brent at Eldora. And uh, Brent, of course, is so good at Port Royal as yeah. well. So uh, great, great stuff, that is for sure. And um, we really appreciate it. Thanks to David Gravel for joining us. Hey, stay with us. More Wing Nation in just a moment. Power isn't born. It's built over time. For over 65 years, Hercules Tires has been providing the muscle to move more drivers. Whatever the vehicle, whatever the terrain, and we back it with a powerful protection plan. So wherever the road or the trail takes you, we have the selection, value, and strength to get you there. Hercules Tires, ride on our strength. Hey Ashley, what are you up to? Oh, I just stopped by to grab some sage fruit apples. Now I just have to decide which ones. You can never go wrong with a Honeycrisp. They're light, crisp, and full of perfectly balanced flavor. Oh, hey. You could always go with one of their classics, the Gala or Fuji. They're both sweet and juicy. Grown in the heart of Eastern Washington, Sage Fruit Company works hard on the farm and with their retail partners to provide high quality apples and pears to consumers all year long. Well, I couldn't decide which ones. Thanks for the help, guys. I'll race you to the checkout. It is Wing Nation presented by Hercules Tires. Ride on our strength. Let's go back to the Dry Dean Hotline. A champion joins us, the IRA champion for the 10th time, the North Pole Nightmare. Bill Baylog is on the phone. Hello, Bill. Welcome back to Wing Nation. How are you? Great. Thanks for having me on. Well, dude, I'm telling you what, you you not only wrapped up the championship, <laughs> but you did it with an exclamation point. Won Dodge County and... Uh, Plymouth this weekend, man. That that's the way to clinch a championship right there. Yeah, it was it was a good weekend for us. I mean, it couldn't have went any better, really. But um, yeah, we were really good at Dodge there, and um, big fast racetrack. It was just a lot of fun. Uh, Plymouth, we, we had a really good race with Peel, and um, right down to the wire. So it was uh, definitely a lot of fun this weekend. Bill, we look at 2020 when every conversation we have, it's about how different this year has been with COVID and schedule changes. You guys put together a fantastic season, even if though it was shortened. Uh, talk about how the season was for you going through the, the pandemic, coming out and still having such a great year. Yeah, we've been racing pretty much ever since that Knoxville Invitational um, early in the year. So we've been racing every weekend. We haven't had to really miss any. Um, had to travel around a little bit, but... Um, yeah, just a great year for us. Um, it, you know, it was a little bit weird at some of those races with, with no fans or just limited fans and stuff like that. But um, for the most part, you know, you just do what you do what you got to do and go racing. But, uh, yeah, I just um, – we had tried a few different things this year and tried not to mess with the car too much, and it seemed to work out for us. We just had a pretty good drivable car and – um, everybody was getting along, so, you know, that's always good, and uh, just uh, had a good year. Bill, this is the non-technical person on the stage here. We've got engineer Aaron and dumb radio guy Steve, okay? <laughs> you talk about you don't adjust the car much, but you also mentioned that the big old half mile at Dodge County and then the little more bouldering type racetrack at Plymouth, the Sheboygan County Fairgrounds, in general terms, not the specific, but in general terms, how different do you make the car between those two, or is it, or is it relatively close? It's pretty close. Um, we just run a little bit different rates of suspension, but um, you know, and obviously you have to change the gears for sure. the speed. But one thing we've just been working on is not getting the car too tight, just keeping it kind of loose, and um, you know that's always better. But um, you know, we're always looking for more grip and that little extra bit, you know, so you, so I think you can, you can really screw yourself up just by getting the car a little bit too tight. But so we've just been working on that for the most part, you know, it's just uh, pretty normal stuff. But um, sometimes the guy's got to reel me in a little bit if I want to change something. So, um, and uh, yeah, so that's, that's just about it. It's, you know, gears and the speed is obviously way different from Plymouth to um, Beaver Dam, but 
we've been both both places so many times you can adapt pretty quickly and it's not not too bad. Bill, you mentioned that you've raced pretty much every weekend since the Knoxville Invitational, and I know you you hop around. You were at the Governor's Reign. You you go to Knoxville sometimes. How much does that help you when you go back and race against IRA? You know, it seems like if you race with one series, the same people all the time, you can almost sometimes get stuck in a rut. But going new tracks, different series, it has to help, you know, not only with the car, but even confidence-wise. Yeah, yeah, you just said it all right there. It was We ran the, the Ryan Auto car this year. Um, at the outlaw shows and the bigger races, which normally I would take my car, and um, you know things are just a little bit different. It's it's not too much, but it's enough to. Um, it's it's nice if you can just run the same car over and over, mm-hmm. uh, night to night with different series. And yeah, we, those outlaw shows early in the year, um, I think we went to about twelve of them and helped us a ton. Um, you know, and I think it. Yeah, you don't want to get stuck going that same speed as, you know, everybody else. And, and with the Outlaws or the All-Stars or whatever, you know, they're they're just going a little bit faster. <laughs> so you can, you know, if you can at least try to keep up with them, you know, it's going to help you um, everywhere. That makes so much sense. It really does. It's really you're, you're mm-hmm. as good as who you're competing with mm-hmm. and, and stepping up and going mm-hmm. against those guys has got to be a challenge, but it also has got to bring the speed out of you guys as you go forward. Bill, sprint car racing, and again, COVID this year made it really, really weird, okay? But I had a chance. I caught up with you guys, saw you at race at Wilmot this year. I've seen you run at Sheboygan. I've seen you run at uh, when Oshkosh was around. I've seen that. And it just looks to me with the IRA being a solid sprint car touring series and the MSA also being a solid print car, sprint car touring series for the 360s. There's even wingless sprint car racing up there. It looks like you guys, it looks like Wisconsin's a pretty good state to be a sprint car driver in. Yeah, I mean, I could have probably moved um you know i moved from alaska so i probably really could have moved anywhere and i i chose wisconsin because of you know just the you can race a lot and um family is here and stuff yeah. so um but yeah it is a it is a great thing and i i've always wanted to take off you know and i talk about this every once in a while you know go run the all-stars or go to the outlaws you know i did i moved a long ways and i don't want to um i don't want to squander it so i I do. I love it here. Um, I love racing with the IRA and, uh, yeah, it's just a great, it's a great series, you know, and it, and it pays well. Um, I think that's something people don't understand. It's hard to jump in your truck and go to an all-star show in New York or Pennsylvania if it's a similar pay right here, you know? So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to the, you know, the coming years and I don't know, uh, I'd like to hit the road, you know, and go do all that stuff, but we'll just have to see what happens. Yeah. Bill, when you moved to Wisconsin, did you ever think that you would win 10 championships? I mean, that is such a mm. huge accomplishment. No, I couldn't even, <laughs> I could barely start the car, you know. I mean, there's, I spun out about 10 times my first year, I think. And, uh, yeah, just, uh, you know, I think there's different types of drivers. There's ones that are full throttle and crash and then start to slow down and get fast. And then there's... Um, there's guys that kind of creep into it a little bit more. Um, and that's me, you know, I kind of started slower and as I learned, I started to step on the gas and figure it out, you know? So, um, I think that kind of helped us a little bit too. I think both ways are good, but, um, it's definitely cheaper to do it my way. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah, <laughs> keep the budget intact. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, <laughs> tough to get car owners when you're trashing yeah. six of them in a year's time. You know, <laughs> right? <laughs> well, it is cool. Well, Bill, congratulations on the uh, championship and all the wins along the way. Been fun chatting with you this year. Uh, I know we've done it a couple of times, and we appreciate you joining us here today on Wing Nation. Yeah, thank you guys very much. There we go, Bill Baylog, the North Pole Nightmare. Joining us here, uh, and, and and I don't know if I mentioned it here, um, friends of mine, Steve Anderson, Anderson's Pure Maple Syrup. Mm. Okay, they're a great, great syrup. Oh, their syrup is ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean ridiculous. I used to do a food blog, and they were one of my partners on the food blog. Oh. Okay, and so they're great, great people, and they always sponsored Richard Childress Racing, a, a an Xfinity car, one or two or three races a year. And they did one this year. They did Auto Club earlier this year. Um, I forget who was in it. It might have been Kaz Grala or one of the young drivers over at RCR. But all of a sudden, I see him on a late model up in Wisconsin, a, a, a super late model asphalt car. And then I look, and they're on yeah, the North Pole Nightmares car. And I'm like, oh, Steve Anderson's picking another winner here is what he's doing. 
And so it is cool. Um, they are, and 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 I ran into Steve and and some of his people at Auto Club Speedway, which was pre-pandemic, which seems like about six years ago now. <laughs> and uh, they are just, they could not be the nicer people. Uh, they're, and I'm just glad to see they're partnered up with Bill, and Bill's partnered with them as well to continue on his racing career because I, I just like when good people yep. get together with good people, and that's what that is. Mm-hmm. So neat, neat stuff. That is for sure. Always love talking to the North Pole nightmare. You know, Ford's racing roots extend all the way back to 1901 when Henry Ford won his first and only race, and they extend until last Thursday night when Donnie Schatz brought a Ford Power World of Outlaw Sprint Car across the finish line, and another win was added to the trophy case. For anyone who loves sprint car racing, that was a banner day when he won his first back in October. It became clear the Blue Oval was back on the dirt tracks and in a big way, with the new FPS 410 engine built in America for truly an American form of racing. Ford is more committed than ever to providing grassroots racing the contemporary power it craves. Stay with us. More Wing Nation in just a moment. Power isn't born. It's built over time. For over 65 years, Hercules Tires has been providing the muscle to move more drivers. Whatever the vehicle, whatever the terrain, and we back it with a powerful protection plan. So wherever the road or the trail takes you, we have the selection, value, and strength to get you there. Hercules Tires, ride on our strength. Team Driving. All right, so I come bearing gifts now for my co-host. Oh, I got gifts. gifts okay, I like gifts. For for years, we've talked about aggressive hydraulics here yes. on the program. Yes. You could those of you watching the video can see it, but those of you not watching the video, I have got for Aaron a oh. an aggressive hydraulics mouse pad. Okay? Awesome. Yes. So there's your mouse pad. All right, and. Oh, now this is for this is for some reading. An aggressive hydraulics catalog. Okay, now I'm looking through this thing. Okay, this is unreal what they do. Okay, um, so Aaron, memorize that. Next week, I'll ask okay. you to pick a page out of it. Let me see read. how much you really learned. I mean, I want to test your engineering skills. This is your test, not mine. Not mine. No, no, no it's come your on test. now. Yeah, let's talk. There's some here. We got some dimensions on the 200 series yes. cylinders. Yes, correct. Medium there are dimensions. Duty. <laughs> yes, the cylinders have dimensions because they use a no one size fits all approach. Yeah. Telescopic, yes. Uh, yes. Um, our, it's, <laughs> I love our friends at Aggressive Hydraulics. Here's the thing. Hydraulic solutions for virtually every industry that uses hydraulic cylinders. For instance, agriculture, construction, defense, emergency services, energy, food processing, forestry, marine, mining, railway, and truck equipment. My gosh, there's not an industry that does not use aggressive hydraulics. They design and manufacture a mobile style single stage cylinders as well as multi stage telescopic cylinders. And like you said, no one size fits all approach. No siree. Love those people. That is for sure. You know who else we love? Our friends in turn number two in Knoxville, because that is where the National Sprint Car Hall of Fame and Museum is located. Now the birthday calendar a little weak this week. Okay, a little weak this week. I was I was accurate <laughs> in saying that, okay? Uh, uh tomorrow, Don Brown. Friday, Mike Nazarek, uh, Saturday, Chuck Hulse, John Singer, and Ed Winfield on uh, Sunday have birthdays. But when we look at the Sprint Car Hall of Fame and Museum, Aaron, there's a couple of things going on, okay? Now, I always tell people, and look, we're into October here before you, before you know it, okay? Christmas holiday shopping. I know I was in big lots last night, and they're setting up Christmas trees. Uh, I know. I'm like, no, don't do this. It's October. We haven't even had Halloween, although Lord knows if we're trick-or-treating or not. Oh, I think you it's all canceled. Yeah, well, go figure. <laughs> the, one, the one holiday where you can wear a mask, you can't go this year because we've got to wear masks. Figure that out. But anyhow, uh, so Christmas trees were going up at big lots last of night. Of course. Okay. 
So here's what I figure. If you've got a Sprint Car fan in your Get world, shopping. go to SprintCarStuff.com, order it now, have it delivered to the house, and then laugh at everybody out shopping because you've got <laughs> your Sprint Car fan taken care of. And Aaron, if there's a Sprint Car driver in your future, you've got one for them. Yes, you can get them on the SprintCarRaffle.com. There's an EMI chassis, Speedway Motors. It's a race-ready 410 Sprint Car. $20 for six, twenty dollars each or 6 for 100 And the drawing is December 18th. See that? So you got a Sprint please Car. Please do not get it from me. I mean, please. Oh, I, yeah, the last gonna, thing yes. I need is to be hopping well, back Well, no, no, no. I'm, I, I'm not buying it for you. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm buying it for you. I'm I'm I want to see you I'm take sli- some yeah, hot Yeah, I want to see me try to slide in between the frame rails of that thing. That'd be the biggest <laughs> challenge right off the bat. Oh. Um, it is uh, it is a great stuff, but yeah, but you think about that drawing is December eighteenth. Imagine it, that's you know, a good Christmas you, gift. You you you'd probably have to put a picture of it under the tree for somebody. Yeah, delivery that'd be, might that'd be, be difficult. A heck of a good Christmas present for somebody. Or SprintCarStuff.com, where books and shirts and hats they and have all a great good, selection. They do. Oh my gosh, their Sprint Car their, their their site is really really cool. All right, so here's the deal. We're gonna talk. Uh, let's see where are we at here. I've lost. I've <laughs> I've I've just totally totally messed everything up here. Okay. Here <laughs> Um, and another place you can go is wingnation.com to yes. get some great apparel uh, as well. Uh, coming up on the uh, Thursday podcast is Wayne Johnson. Um, we love Wayne Johnson. And we're going to talk about his rookie season with the World of Outlaws and the challenges and the struggles and where he's at. And we will do it in only a way Wayne Johnson can do it. <laughs> It'll be entertaining. We will we will probably talk about what has been a struggle of a season, and we will likely laugh our way through it with yes. Wayne. Uh, because he is just that kind of a guy that even on a bad year can make us laugh, yep. and he just is wonderful. Then coming up this weekend on Rev and on Mav, it's our Wing Nation television program presented by Sage Fruit. You want to talk about high-speed racer, <laughs> Brett Marks is going to join us. Woo, man. He parked it in Victor Lane at Eldora as well. So we'll talk to Brett Marks. Hey, we appreciate you. Thanks for joining us here on Wing Nation presented by Hercules Tires. Wing Nation has been brought to you by Hercules Tires. Ride on our strength. Watch Wing Nation Saturday mornings on MAV-TV. You can also find Wing Nation on wingnation.com or your favorite podcast provider. Wing Nation is a production of the Motor Racing Network. All rights reserved.